Designers Cafe. Hi there, everybody. This is Devin Olson from Developer to Developer. Uh, today, I want to spend some time showing you my approach to cutting out a basic building, as well as its interior in the 3D Studio Max 3D application. To begin, I have a basic block that I built here. Nothing special, um, no real characteristics other than it being a little skinny on one side and a little long on the other. Uh, to begin, let's go ahead and select this object and you'll notice right off the bat it's an edible mesh. I tend to work under edible poly so to convert from edible mesh to edible poly just right click on the model and go to convert to and select edible poly. Nothing really changes, it just switches the mesh mode basically. Okay, so to begin cutting out some characteristics of this building, let's use our edge tool and we'll select one of the sides. And we can use the ring tool and we'll be able to select all of the edges all the way around. And now we can right click and go to connect. And this will slice our, our mesh in half according to the edges that we had selected. And it will also auto select the new slice for us. So let's take this slice and we'll move it up. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to use the new real estate or new faces it created for us by using the polygon mode and selecting these faces so that we can use the extrude tool to extrude these out. I like to work with my extrude tool always set to zero. It gives me a maximum control. So with it set to zero, click OK and you'll notice nothing has changed, but what it really did is it extruded out an extra set of polygons for us to play with. So now we can switch our transform mode from move to a scale and begin extruding these out. Great, and now it looks like we have a, a sort of a, a roof terrace. So before we go any further, it's really important to create a constant for our scale. If we're gonna create any sort of floors to this building, or multiple floors, or any sort of windows, or doors, we need to have a constant scale across everything on the inside. So to do that, let's go into our front view uh, by hitting F on your keyboard. And I like to keep my unit set up under a metric of meters. To create my constant, I tend to focus on doors. So doors go everywhere as far as a doorway leading from one room to another or a, a door leading to the opening or the exit of a building. Doors tend to be a great constant across all interiors of a building. So to do that, let's go and create a new box. And with our snap tool, we'll create a two by four. We can turn our snap tool off now. And this will be our door. This is a, um, a great scale to use for a door. Obviously now we can see that our building is a bit big for our door scale, unless we're gonna have possibly five floors. So I'm gonna go ahead and start scaling this building down a little bit, because I was imagining maybe, maybe two or three floors. So now let's create an entrance to our building <clears throat> by using our new door and its scale. And to do that, we'll go to the edge tool again and select one of the edges this building and we'll use the ring tool again to select all of these sides right click go to connect and we'll move this new slice down to the top of our door let's go ahead and turn our building transparent by hitting alt X and we'll go into a front view and now we'll select the bottom and the new cut of our front of our building and we'll create another cut by right clicking connect and we'll move this to the side of our door and again we'll make another cut and move this to the other side of our door so hitting P for perspective view again and Z to zoom in we can see we have a nice outline around our door so unselect the edge tool and we'll move the door out of the way now and we'll select our building and this time we'll use the polygon tool with our new cutout selected, we'll go ahead and use the extrude tool again. And we'll move it in slightly. Now notice I don't go all the way in and I start extruding this all out because just like any door frame, it is a frame. So we just take this single extrude, move it in slightly, and then we do a, an additional extrude. 
and this one will move out all the way. But now you can see that because we made that first extrude, we can select either side of the new extrude and extrude that face out. Move it this way and vice versa for the other side. Now we also need to do an extrude for our ceiling because it's very uncommon for the, the ceiling and the top of the door frame to meet exactly. So with that selected, we'll do another extrude and move it up. Now you're probably beginning to see why I like to keep my extrude set to zero because it gives me maximum control on how I would like to scale or, or move my extrudes versus letting the software determine that for me. So now let's start talking about building out walls for this new extruded floor of our building. So if we hit Alt-X again, we can take the transparency off and we can start to see that getting detailed walls or any sort of interior work done with these walls in our way, even while under a transparent mode, is going to get very tricky. So what I like to do is go ahead and start selecting the faces that we would just like to remove or get out of our way for the time being so that we can focus on one area of the model. So I'll go ahead and select all the outer walls and why not? Let's go ahead and select the roof too. Okay. And with that selected, uh, we can go down into Edit Geometry Rollout and hit the Hide Selected. And this will hide the selected faces from the model. Didn't delete anything, they're just hidden from our view. Um, this makes it a lot easier for us to work on a single area of the model without you know, actually exploding and deattaching parts and moving things around and having to re-weld everything back together. We'll just clear them out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just start creating maybe a, a back hallway through here, as well as maybe some front room right here that has two entrances to it from our front and the back hallways. To do that, again, we're going to go ahead and select our edges, um, cut, and extrude. But before we do that, let's take time to go ahead and start cleaning up this floor a little bit. Now what I mean by that is for each extrude that we made, we were very careful at making sure everything was cut to scale. And in doing so, we've created additional edges and polys and verts that we probably don't need for this floor to stand up on its own. So what I like to do is go ahead and start selecting the, the edges that we know aren't necessary for this room to hold up. So these edges right here are really not necessary as long as we have our main supporting ones. Like any sort of cardboard box, it just needs the, the edges that define the actual box itself. So with those selected, we can go to our Edit Edges Rollout and click Remove. And we'll probably want to do the same thing for our ceiling extrude that we did. So we'll come in here and select all these. That's only half of the step of cleaning up usually. You'll need to also switch to the vert mode and you'll see that there'll be leftover vertices. Now it's very important that you do it in that order. You need to remove the edges first before trying to remove the vertices, otherwise your mesh will begin to collapse on itself if you try to remove the vertices first. So with the leftover vertices selected, we can now again hit remove in the edit vertices rollout now. And voila. So again, we can, we can clearly see the defining points of the room or the areas that are, are really needed just for the room to stand up on its own and then get rid of the additional uh, slices. So with floor cleaned up, we'll go ahead and select our, our edges again. And we'll connect. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay. Now you might be wondering, wow, what, what is going on here? So when we had these faces selected and then these back faces selected, obviously there is a difference in scale because of the door right here. So the back ones were longer versus the front ones that were shorter. So when I made the slice, 3 Studio Max came up with the calculation of this would be the exact center on these front edges and this would be the exact center on these back edges. So with this new slice introduced here, when we made our second slice, its math was corrected against the center of this slice point and this endpoint and this slice point and this endpoint. 
So wow, how do we fix that?